Here's another pile of garbage that I wrote. Uh, it was supposed to be up for New Year's, but it's not. Because it sucks. And uh, I was gonna post it to Fim Fiction, but it's... It's rejected. Anyway. This is New Year with Adagio. You hurry over the cold, snow-slick street in a bothered rush. The darkness has already fallen, even if the stars have not yet come out, and you are late. Very late. An uncomfortable phone call kept you and made you angry in more ways than one. Your mother has not stopped bitching ever since Christmas. A constant bombardment of annoyance for almost a week. You had the great idea of bringing your girlfriend along to the family gathering, something you had been putting off for a long, long time. She had been understanding about it at first, but slowly, over time, started questioning your explanations of the fact that your family is completely insane. What a painful clusterfuck it had been. You knew Adagio and your mother would never get along, but you had not expected the nuclear meltdown that happened. It had been hate at first sight. You could not even introduce your yellow and orange angel before sparks were flying off your mom. Adagio had dressed proper, modestly, and even put on a non-evil smile for once. Of course, her short fuse and snide sarcasm had quickly crept back once your mother had made herself into an adversary. You skid to a stop and almost end up run over by a passing vehicle. Look left, look right, look left again. Your head is swimming up in the dark, lightless sky. Thoughts just colliding violently about what you had to do, and probably still have to do, about patching things up with the women in your life. Naturally, you had defended Adagio the best you could, at least in the ways you could bring yourself to. She had already made it abundantly clear that she fights her own battles. She would not have accepted your so-called help. You take a deep breath and put on a smile. She is remarkable in all senses of the word. Tearing through the streets for a few more minutes, you finally spot your destination. Probably not her first choice, but a sentimental place for you for multiple reasons. The shoddy little corner pub you've spent a good few nights in. The shoddy little corner pub where you first kissed her after a long, long night on the town. That feels like ages ago. You feel like a bad boyfriend for not remembering exactly how long, but it is coming up on a year now. A year. You think about all the days you ached for her. Even hours of separation felt like knives in your soul. You are head over heels, and while she mainly keeps a cool exterior, that's fucking bad English right there. I'm, I'm bad at this. Although you have seen the glint in her eye, more and more lately, she seems to hate the rest of the world more and more each day while she has almost started acting girlishly affectionate around you. You love that. Love it a lot. You and her against the world. There's a certain spring in your step as you approach the place. It is a strange feeling to start off here. You usually end up here after a couple of drinks, or end it here with a whole bunch of drinks. Perhaps that little change is part of it. The whole feeling of something about to happen. Silly little butterflies in your stomach. You silently scold yourself for your jitters as you reach the door. Stepping in from the coal is like entering another world. A dimly lit little fairyland populated by both grim and merry faces. Many of them you know on a first-name basis, the rest are just here, passing by. None of the usual faces matter, though, you have but one goal. She's in here somewhere. You coax your coat off and fold it over an arm as you stride through the hushed murmur up to the bar. The keep smiles at you and wordlessly start pouring a glass of your favorite ale. When the frothing beverage is on the bar top, you thank him and ask for where your special lady might be seated. He points you in the right direction and lets you know that the drink is on your modest tab. No need to dawdle with money right now. Your vision is a tunnel of focus as you slowly make your way through the small spaces of the cramped locale. Cold glass against your hand and your head in the clouds. The soft lighting is dotted with little candles on the tables around you. You do not need any light in particular to navigate this place. You have done this little dance before, far too many times. To the booths in the back, everything feels like a film. You're not prepared for the sight that awaits you. When it strikes, you stop in your steps and stare dumbly for a while. She has not yet noticed you. With that thought, you thank the gods that she has not. The beautiful visage before you is to die for. Adagio is sitting alone in one of the old-timey booths in the furthest back. She's looping her index finger around the edge of a nearly empty glass of wine. 
candle lights illuminating her morose face. What draws your attention next is what she's wearing, a slim, tight black dress, highly contrasting to her natural colors. You have to swallow and take a deep breath through your nose before proceeding. As you approach, she looks up from her boredom and a sinister smirk slowly spreads over her face. You can pretty much physically feel her eyeing you as you sit down with an obvious dumb look on your face. She raises an eyebrow. You have never seen something so heavenly. You stammer some excuse. She cocks her head to the side, smirk unwavering. Her eyes are predatory, her body relaxed, her magnetism is undeniable. Your eyes flutter back and forth, waiting for a response. Finally, her expression softens. Her eyes practically glow as she greets you with the sweetest of voices. You feel right ready to melt into a puddle at her feet. You do your best to remain collected for the time being. She looks absolutely perfect and you feel underdressed. A mouthful of ale. You ask her about her day. She happily replies with a description of the drudge she feels. You make a joke. Nail it. You both laugh. She did not have much of a wall built up to begin with, but whatever there was is instantly broken down. You play the gentleman, as usual, comment smoothly on her exquisite appearance and offer her another drink. As you go to acquire it for her, you share a meaningful locking of the eyes before you go. The butterflies in your stomach are replaced with a hurricane in your heart. You have never felt like this for any other girl, especially not after nearly a full year together. Your jitters make you feel like a nervous teenager again. An approving look and nod from the barkeep, and you soon return with another glass of wine for Adagio. She really is glowing as she focuses all her attention on your return, elbows on the table and head resting on clasped hands. You have to swallow and focus, not just to fall over right there. She is picture perfect, the very meaning of beauty. You settle down opposite of her, and she gives you a much softer look than before, her driven malice and stern purpose muddled behind that girlish affection you have been enjoying of late. Absolutely perfect. She gladly accepts the wine and takes a small sip. You happily watch her lips caress the glass, wishing it was any part of your body. Watching her like this has pretty much had you in a trance a thousand times before, and that does not seem to be changing any time soon. As she sets the glass down, you follow her motion with your eyes, and as you look up again, she has another sharp smirk on her face. She knows she has you spellbound, and she enjoys it. She shifts a little, leans on the table with one arm. She asks about your day. It is almost like... It is almost like she knows you slept in, wandered around aimlessly, argued with your mother, and got late because of it. You feel like you're confessing while explaining the silliness. She nods understandingly and actually offers kind words instead of a snarky comment when you reluctantly describe your mother's emotions. Adagio obviously does not care and that is the best help on the entire subject. You picked sides the first second. The knowledge that you do not have to soothe her washes over you like a warm spring breeze. You have never met a person before that holds her own like Adagio. You raise your glass, and she does the same. Smiles exchange with a clink of beverage containers. You drink as you watch her do the same, her eyes closed as she enjoys the red liquid. You take in the sight for as long as it lasts. She has a radiant aura. The dim lights above and the candle on the table give her an ethereal look. Her mass of hair frames the rest of her shape and assists the glow. It takes you a few moments to realize she said something. You shake out of it and look like a deer in headlights for a moment. She snickers and leans forth to place her hand on yours. The feeling of being a nervous teenager rushes back like a mental avalanche. Her dainty fingers are like silk against your rough palm. Your eyes lock and you feel time slows down to a crawl. There is no other explanation to the feelings you're experiencing. You have looked into the deep well of her beautiful eyes so many times before. The jitters are only getting stronger. You guess it is the situation, perhaps the tension of days past, perhaps even something as simple as what she's wearing, but surely there is something, something different. Fingers dance against each other, it almost feels like a kiss. You exchange sweet nothings, followed by a good few words that actually mean something. Both of you share emotions more than usual. You've both had the time and chance to ease into it gradually. 
You have basically said all and everything besides profess love. Well, some form of love has been spoken about, but not yet the famous I love you. You have both been teetering on the brink for months. All things considered, the moment currently going on almost feels like a competition who can hold it in the longest. You have gone over this a million times in your head. Should you just fall to your knees and confess? Should you wait for her to crack? What would be the most satisfying? You do not know. She pulls you out of your contemplative dreamlike state with a question. Where is this evening heading? Where are you going next? She has already made it abundantly clear at other times that she does not want to spend an entire evening in this dimly lit, timeless hole. Not something that ever offended you, it simply taught you to be more creative with your dates and finally your usual hangouts. You have improved by simply having her around. She is obviously very comfortable around you, something that was the first spark you had together. Something like love at first sight, followed by a long time of dancing around the subject. Tonight marks the occasion. One of you will, sooner or later, lay down the cards and say it. The love thing. The words sound out aloud in your head. She instantly notices the unease on your face and cocks a brow. She drinks her wine while eyeing you meaningfully. You chuckle and empty your glass in response. This whole ordeal is a shaky little race. Well, a race without any manner of speed. A contest nonetheless. You know how she works, and she obviously has a very keen eye for you. A battle of minds. Minds set on the same thing. A match made in heaven, if there is such a thing. You talk further about what is next, the new year, the clock ticking down to a showdown of sorts. The winter sky will be filled with the bright colors of burning projectiles. A few more glasses, perhaps. A good few more moments of just staring into each other's eyes. The cheesy romance is so thick that you almost fear it might start spreading to other people around you. Exactly what you wanted. Well, besides the latter part. You excuse yourself and leave the booth to get more drinks. Walking on clouds and apparently glowing earns you a hearty guffaw from the barkeep. He winks and pours drinks swiftly enough. When you return to your booth, Dajo is standing, her stance crooked, accenting her ample hips. She waits in silence as you approach, then takes your arm just as you're about to sit down. Smiling broadly, she scoots into the booth very close to you, still clinging to your arm. You have experienced this before. You have been over this with yourself in your head just as many million times as the other things. What other things? It all simply melts away when she is this close, clinging to your arm as if you were the only piece of stable ground in the middle of a roiling sea. You want to control it, but you cannot. You are blushing. Unending warmth spreads through your body like a torrent of fire, uncontrollable heat that is not even remotely quelled by the intake of more cold ale. You're about to set your glass down, but stop dead in your tracks. A sound. The sweet, sweet sound of Adagio giggling. You look to your side and see her look up from her new glass of wine, her face flushed and eyes shifty. It would appear the alcohol is taking effect. Nothing you counted on, but at the same time nothing you will complain about. You enjoy all her moods, all her sides. A dark, brooding Adagio is just as attractive as a girlishly giggling one. The thing is... Right now, a girlish giggle helps to defog your clouded mind. You sling an arm around her and pull her even closer than she has positioned herself. You are rewarded with another short giggle. You sit together for a long moment in silence, just listening to the dim world around you, the low murmur of conversations. No real distinction of words, but a very pleasant background noise. Through it all, all you can think about is how her very presence is intoxicating. She wiggles a bit in your grip, and you look down at her. She's so small compared to you, a thing you've always found extremely intriguing. She may be able to be real scary at times, but you usually get to feel like the man you are. You nearly chuckle at the thought, but you're caught by her half-lidded gaze. You collect yourself and give her a sly smirk of your own. Her response is to bury her face into your chest. You sit motionless for a bit. If this little moment was eternal, you would not complain. The blissful eternity is divided by a few sips of drink, and what could be best described as extremely intimate cuddling. 
You've had many wordless moments like this before. The underlying tension just makes it even more interesting. You have no idea her intentions, you just assume they are somewhere near your own. Overthinking it is definitely a thing. Then again, you have no worries. She gave you part of the success when she snuggled up to you in the first place. It took a long, long while and a whole lot of effort to get her to open up like this, especially in public or around her sisters. Now she instigates it herself. You can just go with the flow. A very good feeling. You sit pretty much deathly still for some time. Even as you cannot hear it, you feel her breathing. Her surprisingly strong, slim frame rested comfortably against you. This is more than likely indeed what heaven feels like. You join the murmur of the place with a few low-spoken words of your own. The more you explain the simple course of the evening, the more she seems to melt into your arms. Nothing has ever satisfied you so. You exchange words in sultry, hushed tones. You drink together until your glasses are dry. You find yourself wanting, while she seems to have had at least enough to get started. Before long, she makes a lithe cat-like movement and escapes your grip. She downs the last drop of her wine while standing up, extending a hand to you. She gives another divine smile. You have another moment of contemplating the difference in size between you and her as you stand up. You tower above her, feeling just as manly as when you had the previous thoughts on the subject. Perhaps an odd thing to think about. Perhaps something nature intended. You praise the powers that be as you take a swift step around to retrieve her jacket. She usually disapproves of such things, but tonight has a magical feeling of change. At least for the remainder of the year, a short while, a good start. She observes you in silence, with her predatory gaze obviously muddled by the wine. As you offer up her jacket held ready for her to slip into, she just grins and takes the offer. Arms in, she takes an extra step back and brushes up against you. Looking over her shoulder, her grin has been replaced by a mysterious little smile. Your head thunders and heart races. This entire situation is impossibly good. You step around her and lean in. She's quickly there to meet you. Quick kiss before you get your own coat and she busies herself with puffing up her hair. She then grasps your arm. You're ready to head out into the frozen night. Striding victoriously through the locale, you give a few greetings and well wishes to some of the more familiar faces and finally uh, wave goodbye to the keep. An old creaky door later and you are back out in the cold. Only now, you are not alone and stressed. All the worries of the world washed away by her presence. You definitely lost track of time in there. Out here, the stars are now dominating the surprisingly clear sky. You have a course, a spot to end up on. She suggests a stop on the way, a different venue for another drink. You do not protest, you have no reason to. There is time and you are both in high spirits. The city streets are devoid of the earlier frantic traffic. It has been replaced with groups of people, scurrying singles, strolling couples, packs of loudly celebrating partygoers. You walk with purpose, the king of the world right now with your queen on your arm. A bit of happy idle chit chat, a bit of thoughts for the future. You almost let slip a few things you promised yourself you would say at the most appropriate moment tonight. Before you know it, she points up ahead and pulls you along with some extra enthusiasm. You soon find out why. Of course, she would want to go to her own stomping grounds. You feel rather bad for forgetting one of her favorite places was on the way, probably due to all the other lovely noise in your head. Pretty much the perfect opposite of your shoddy old corner pub, the place you're heading for is a, some kind of fabulous, colorful musician's joint. No longer on your arm, but with a firm grasp of your hand, she barges in like she owns the place. A few patrons look up, almost as if recognizing the sound of her step. A few of the few even greet her in different ways. You look around with bewildered eyes, feeling like an alien in this place. Sure, you've been here before, but that does not stop the feeling of utter wonder. Adagio dances over to the bar with you in hurried tow. The just as colorful bartender eyes you up and down a good few times while happily greeting Adagio. Are you good enough for this genderless nobody? You do not care, but approval feels good anyway, as he she nods with a smile while serving up the order. You are presented with some strange cocktail, how special or whatever, an unending cascade of colors. You hold back a huff and just take it. If this is what Adagio wants, this is what she gets. 
She leads on into the back of the place, just as she had perched in the back of yours. She remains eternally determined, poised and purposeful. A very attractive trait. Before long, you are seated on a small yet strangely comfortable sofa, accompanied by a hideously designed tiny table. First you struggle with the amount of space you take up, and the oddly shaped glass of your drink. The worries of those tiny problems are soon washed away as Adagio makes a point to wiggle out of her jacket in front of you. Very seductive movements and a gaze that makes your soul burn as you thinking about entirely different things than the dumb decor. You hardly even blink as she moves in close, very close. She invades all and any personal space you had and you are happy about every second of it. Finally, she sits down and leans against you with a satisfied sigh. She holds her drink high and toasts to you two, the past year and the year to come. So many things to do, so many things to improve and set right, so many things that are already good. You gently strike your glass against hers and kiss the top of her head before tasting the strange fruity drink. The cocktail hits like a train, mixing closely with the surrounding and music of the place. You manage to think of how fitting it is to be called the house special before being thrown into some kind of trance. The atmosphere is actually quite enthralling. Sure, it is probably most due to Adagio's close presence, but the rest is a refreshing difference from the usual. Glasses drain empty. She gets up from time to time to order new, strange concoctions. She talks to the waitresses like they are old friends. Perhaps they are. You watch silently and just take it all in. The music surges through it all. Genres you've never heard of. Slow, fast, noisy, calm. Time ticks away and you cannot even remember the last time you were not smiling in bliss. In the wondrous haze, you by chance manage to notice the time. A time to carry on, a time to pull yourself out of this enchanted trance. You both have places to be, things to do, even if they are just more simple pleasures. You notify Adagio and watch her happily empty her glass as you both rise from the seat. Another bar conquered, another stroll through the winter cold awaits. You feel a bit dazed, but her chipper enthusiasm spurs you on like nothing else. She seems to momentarily have left her seriousness behind. She prances back and forth, singing along to the music and generally just putting on a very interesting little show. Sure, you've heard her sing, seen her perform, but usually not like this. It is hard to take your eyes off her just for a second. This slows you down, but does not entirely hinder you from getting ready. She dances around you before slowly coming to a halt beside you. Large hand on her sensually curved hip, you walk together out of the place. She does just the same as you did before, greeting a few people, even mildly taunting others. She finishes with a grand laugh while the door closes behind you. A firm tug at your clothing, she reaches up and kisses you, rather sloppily on the lips. You quickly accept and touch the side of her face while deepening the kiss. Your tongues dance for a moment before she breaks away and smirks at you, pawing at your chest for a moment before reminding you that you have to go. Time has all of a sudden become short. You make your way further up the street, as entangled in each other as possible while still walking. Your destination is not too far off. You feel so light that it is like your feet do not even hit the pavement. Both your heads are in the stars. Making it up the hill is not even an issue. The frosty grass crunch beneath your boots as you reach the one screen area on top of the hill. People have gathered in couples and groups. The city spreads out below. Lights glittering like the night sky above. Only a few minutes left before that changes. You stand still with Adagio in front of you, your arms wrapped around her and her hands in yours. Silence for now. Just the pleasure of the company and the wait until things kick off. Colors begin to fill the sky, traces of glittering stars, flashes of elaborate explosions, the thunderous smattering of small explosions that go off in random intervals together. The starry sky suddenly has a billion new stars that shoot into existence and blink out just as fast. The fireworks taking over the entire city for a few minutes. You feel that you shudder slightly, if from cold or enjoyment you do not know. When most of the explosions in the sky have gone and only the stragglers fill the air, she turns to you. Still in your grip, she looks into your eyes for a long while, something apparently at the tip of her tongue. The cheers from the others around you, callings for a great new year means nothing. You can hardly hear them. You swallow once. 
and speak before she can form any words. I love you. She looks utterly shocked. You have a second of remorse and doubt. Before you can start contemplating the impact of what you just said, she tosses her arms around your neck. She showers you in kisses, and you even have a hard time answering them as she presses herself up against you. Wordless, you let her kiss your face wildly for a moment before catching her lips in a deep, passionate kiss of your own. The world melts away. The beautiful starry night matters not in comparison to this. You stand there for what feels like another perfect eternity. Finally, Adagio pulls back for a deep breath. Her eyes flutter around and then land upon you. A sharp, evil smile splits her face. Let's hurry home. I have something for you. You barely have time to kick off your boots as she tugs you along by your collar. Door slams and jacket, coat, shoes and shirt just fly everywhere. Before you know it, you're sitting on your bed dressed only in your pants. You do not even know where your socks went. Adagio dances around the room. She closes the blends, turns down the lights, turns on your old CD player. A device she usually despises. A low volume tune fills the room, background noise to the show. Her eyes flash in the low light. Her body moves like a feral animal. Slow, agile, dangerous. She lets the straps of her dress snake down her shoulders and then fall down her upper arms. She holds the fabric against her modest chest and gives you the most brain-meltingly sexual look you have ever had the pleasure to experience. She rolls her shoulders and her hips, swaying slightly from side to side, slowly at first, then with more and more movement, seamless, fluid motion as she starts twirling around, stepping to and fro. You're absolutely lost in the dance you're witnessing. Hips, all hips. She sidesteps and bends forward, allowing a teasing glint of her tiny cleavage. Your arousal is already boiling wildly. She is surprisingly good at this. You do not linger on how or why and instead enjoy the show. She holds up the dress with one hand and very deftly pulls down the zipper at her back. You are almost entirely certain she practiced this exact moment. That only makes it better. She twirls around and lets the slim dress peel down her body, first with help, but as it reaches past her hips, she raises her hands to the ceiling and simply lets it fall. Her choice of underwear is elaborate, full-on lingerie lacking bra, legs clad in subtle thigh highs of some nearly invisible mesh, garter belt with straps and dark lace panties. Her well-rounded behind sways slowly now, hypnotizing you further with every second. She pulls her mass of hair aside and looks over her shoulder. Your eyes meet. You feel ready to howl at the top of your lungs, but you keep calm. Calm enough that you can, anyway. The boiler inside of you is already screaming and vibrating, ready to explode. It does not take her more than first glance to notice this. Obviously, it pleases her. She stays completely still for a moment, just looking at you with nearly closed eyes. A sharp smile playing on her lips. She bends down and lets her hair fall in the poofy cascade it is. The crook of her back is heavenly. Her legs go on forever, all the way from her delicate feet to her extremely desirable ass. You feel breathless, like all the oxygen just left the room, either that or a brutal punch to the chest. She turns slowly, not all the way around. You haven't seen her naked before, but never like this. Your heart is jackhammering, making you feel like you're on a different planet. She goes down into a squat, then rises as she turns all the way around, taking two extremely accentuated steps towards you. Just as divine as her body is, her face catches your attention and you simply cannot let go. You start to stand up, but she pushes you down while approaching further. She climbs into your lap, knees on the bed. She caresses your face with one hand and keeps herself steady with the other on your shoulder. She whispers for you to touch her. For all the thunder in your head, your hands are absolutely steady as you trail your fingers through the edge of her hair, down her back and sides. A careful touch at first, but as you reach her hips and behind, you cannot help but to squeeze. She lets out a long, humming moan and presses herself against you. Her hips gyrate slightly against your touch. 
You kiss her chest. Her skin is smooth and soft. She smells indescribably pleasant. She pulls back with a little gasp and looks you in the eyes, then dives in for a kiss. A long moment of unbroken kissing. She claws slightly at your back and moves against you as your hands get more greedy with her behind. You knead the plump yet firm flesh as she bucks against you with more and more need. Her clothed sex grinding against your hidden rock-hard erection. After what feels like an hour of sloppy kissing and intense touching, she leans back with both hands against your chest. She hovers for a while, motionless, then declares that she wants you inside of her. You do not need to be told twice. You finicky about with your pants for just a few seconds and actually manage to get them off. You kick them away and observe her glee as she looks down at your manhood. She hooks a finger on the rehem of her panties and pulls them aside, exposing her moist womanhood before rubbing up against you again. Her soft, wet heat spreading over your member. She breathes ragged breaths into your ear. Her little noises mixed with adorable moans as you roll your hips to meet her movements. She clings onto you with both arms around your neck. You reach down to position your member in order to enter her. This type of thing is another moment when your difference in size comes into play. You have to be careful. Your larger than average manhood is, in comparison to her frame, easily described as enormous. You caress her labia with the tip of your member and watch her squirm. A light shudder goes through her as you have positioned yourself proper and she can begin taking you in. She speaks some unintelligible words and bites her lower lip. Her grip around your neck tightens. You position your hands on her behind again to hold her steady. She moans breathy in your ear and then whines as she shudders again. You can feel her juices make your shaft slick as she slowly begins moving the tip of your manhood finally inside. She is incredibly tight. You do not at all mind the slow approach you usually have to take. That, on top of tonight's romance, makes this whole dreamlike scenario, well, more dreamlike. She gets a bit braver as her wetness allows for easier movement, lifting her behind just slightly to then let it drop. It's this your turn to shudder in delight as she takes more and more of you in. She suddenly stops, seemingly satisfied with the full feeling she's getting, and perhaps not daring to go further for the moment. She hangs back and looks at your face as she starts swaying her hips a bit from side to side. This instantly elicits a rather audible grunt from you. She moans shortly in response and leans in to give you a quick peck on the lips before looking at you through her long eyelashes. She smirks, as sharp and characteristic as she usually does before beginning to move again. Her smirk is quickly replaced by a different expression, one of sexual pleasure. You let your hands move up and down her curves. You run your fingers through her hair and play with the frills of her lingerie. She bounces a bit more daringly every second. With your hands back on her perfect ass to once again steady her, you work up a fair rhythm together. Her sweet voice rings out in a symphony of moans, whimpers and hushed words of sexy nonsense. She embraces your head with both arms and presses her cute little breasts into your face. You kiss her skin and feel your member throb with the extra encouragement. You move together like it was what you were made to do, her soft skin and erotic curves serving a reality to your greatest fantasies. With a swift motion, she basically slams down, taking more of you inside of her, quite possibly as much as she can. She looks to the ceiling with a sound somewhere between a whimper and a moan. She presses herself even tighter against you. You can practically hear and feel her heart thundering. The rhythm you had stops. She sits still and panting, pleasantly speared on your member as you both gather yourselves. You have the chance to change the already pleasant situation. An idea, a move, something. You hold on to her midsection with one hand and put your other arm up her back to keep her steady as you stand up. A slowly but fairly smooth movement. She yelps and manages a little giggle while you turn around and let your knee press onto the bed. You lay her down as gentle as you can while managing to remain inside of her. She hangs on and catches her breath while you move her. As she lays on her back, she relaxes and reaches for your face. She murmurs something about how delicious you are before stopping any response with a kiss. You have to crook nearly your entire body to kiss her back, something you're fairly used to. 
it is not like this is the first time. As you cover her and you, she's obviously having the time of her life. She wiggles sensually beneath you as you begin moving in and out of her, ever so slight, slow, careful. There is bliss on her face as you fill her time and time again. She bends her back and her soft hands fly across your sides. She grasps your arms as her symphony of moans and cute little noises quickly resumes. Looking up at you, her entire being practically glows. You hold yourself up with fists balled into the bed. Your eyes are locked and you take her again and again. Your soft grunts mix with her moans. She is holding nothing back now, clawing at you and reaching up to give you kisses whenever, wherever she can. You answer kisses and caresses, match strokes with the rolling of her hips. She splays out on the bed beneath you and closes her eyes with a smile. You have at it, to your heart's content, enjoying her small frame beneath you. Your mind and heart races. This moment serves well with washing away the frustration of the last few days. Telling her your true feelings was an excellent way to feel better. You go down on an elbow, still hovering over her on top of the bed, eyes closed, breath ragged. You breathe in through your nose and breathe out to the side. Another thrust. You give her what you have left. You have been close for some time now. Thoughts have been keeping you. Distractions of no bad nature. You lean in close and whisper in her ear. You are about to come. You are about to fill her up completely one last time tonight. She murmurs her want for it. She tosses her arms and legs around you and holds on tight. A few rapid movements, one final thrust. You quake as orgasm hits. She digs her nails into your back while her slim frame vibrates against you. You lock your arms, keeping yourself up, breathing heavily. Stars dance about your vision, but you never take your focus off her. Her smile is just as pleasant as the release you just had. You pant once. You pant twice. She seems to be the more collected one right now. She smiles up at you and trails her fingers down your physique while your mind is swimming in outer space. She takes a deep breath while trailing her fingers down the side of your face. Happy New Year, my love.